As with many great stories, this one begins with a DM from Advanced Memer and Antarctica's number one heartthrob, Alpharad. Alpharad had decided to host a tournament in Pokemon Unite, and was inviting content creators of all different genres and sizes to participate in the spectacle. I played a fair bit of Pokemon Unite when the game came out, but stopped playing completely several months ago. However, I'm a person who likes to commit to things fully, so when I got my invitation to this prestigious tournament, I broke out my Switch and started to practice. Now, I know what you're thinking. I don't know anything about Pokemon Unite, so why would I watch this video? Fear not, beloved viewer, for I will give you all the knowledge you require to understand this beautiful and chaotic game. Pokemon Unite is a MOBA-style game, the same genre as League of Legends. Oh, bro. That means it's a team game, with five players on each side trying to work together to best one another. The goal of the game is to score more points than your opponents, which you can do at goals around the map. Each side begins with five goals, though if enough points are scored, a goal can be destroyed. How do you get points, you ask? It's quite simple, actually. Wild Pokémon spawn regularly across the map, and knocking them out yields some points that you can use to score. Knocking out both Wild Pokémon and your opponents also gives experience, just like in the main series of Pokémon. It's this experience that often determines the winner of the game. Typically, a team that is higher level will have a significant advantage against a lower level team. The map is evenly divided into two equal halves. Players knock out the wild Pokémon on their own side of the map, and then meet in the middle to try and KO the neutral wild Pokémon and each other. The last thing you need to know is that there are three primary zones on the map. The top, bottom, and middle lanes. The jungler is typically the most influential role, as because they aren't sharing experience with a teammate, they're often the highest level on their team. So, you should now have an understanding of how Pokémon Unite works. Players KO wild Pokémon to get experience and earn points, which they dunk at goals around the map, fighting over the wild Pokémon in the center. I had a few weeks to prepare for the tournament, but I wasn't sure which character I wanted to play. I have the most experience with Venusaur, who is great at doing damage from a distance, and Talonflame, who excels at finishing off low HP targets. I was going back and forth on which character I wanted to play, when I got a DM that, though I didn't know it at the time, would go on to change my life. A simple message from one of my best friends, Aaron Trailer. It was a link to a Twitch VOD from Goof, one of the best Unite players in the world. In this VOD, Goof uses Greedent to sprint all the way across the map at the start of the game, totally ignoring the wild Pokémon on his team's side of the map, and instead begins doing his utmost to steal the wild Pokémon from the opponent, deep in enemy territory. Goof specifically targets the enemy team's jungler, as they are typically the most influential role on the team, and despite the opponent's best efforts, he makes off with lots of experience from the opponent throughout the game. For me, it was love at first sight. This is a totally unorthodox way of playing the game, and goes against nearly every standard convention for how the game should be approached. Moreover, Greedon is probably the only character who can successfully pull off such a heist. Before it evolves, it uses Tackle, a move that allows it to dash with a very short cooldown. Because of the length of the dash and the short recharge time, Squovit is one of the only Pokémon, if not the only one, that can make it all the way across the map before the opponent has KO'd their important wild Pokémon. And once Squovit evolves into Greedent, it truly becomes a menace. <laughs> Tackle is replaced by a move I am personally very familiar with, Stuffed Cheeks. Stuffed Cheeks has Greedent throw multiple Orin Berries in front of it, which it uses to heal itself and move faster. With the move with both healing and increased speed, Greedent is nearly impossible to catch, making it a very slippery burglar indeed. Oh, and did I mention that when Greedent attacks or takes damage, it also throws out those Orin Berries? It probably goes without saying, but... Uh, people were not very happy to play against Greedent in the tournament. Part of the reason I chose to use this strategy is that I thought our opponents wouldn't be prepared for it in the tournament, and wouldn't know how to approach it. Using Greedent in this way is very volatile. If you run across the map, don't KO any of the opponent's wild Pokémon, and get knocked out, you'll be in a really bad position. Also, you're weakening your own top lane, as instead of having two team members, you only have one. That being said, after talking it over with my team, we decided the risk was worth the reward. Speaking of, this tournament was a 5v5. You can't play Pokemon Unite by yourself. Our team was as follows. Rickles played Jungler, using Talonflame, outputting lots of damage and finishing off low HP foes. Aaron was half of our bottom lane duo, using Cinderace as a ranged damage dealer to wear foes down over time and generally be a nuisance to our opponents. Joining Rickles in the bottom lane was Scooch, playing the all-important tank role as Snorlax. Scooch would open up teamfights by stunning opponents, and keep them away from important objectives with block. Last but certainly not least was Moxie, 
who would be holding down the top lane on his own with Sarina while I was off on my jungle adventure. Sarina functions by fighting up close with the opponent, and excels at sustaining herself during extended, drawn-out fights. We decided on the team name Team Pikachu, as none of us knew how to play Pikachu. Most of my teammates had played a bit at launch, and then stopped shortly after. Scooch actually had never played the game until around 10.30pm the night before the tournament, and stayed up late grinding to make sure he could unlock the eject button item. I had the most experience on the team, so I ended up serving as Shot Caller, directing my teammates to different parts of the map, depending on what was happening in the game. The night before the tournament, the five of us hopped on a call to introduce ourselves and get some practice in. We played for about two hours, and then called it a night to make sure we were well rested for the big day the next morning. And just like that, the tournament was finally here. The tournament used a round robin format, with each team playing each of the other seven teams one time in a best of one game. This further strengthened my strategy of using Greedon, as opponents would not get a chance to react and would be even more likely to be caught off guard by the Squirrel Burglary. Before we jump into the matches, please consider subscribing. Currently, only about 6% of my viewers are subscribed, and I'd really love to get that number up. Anyway, here's how the actual tournament went. Our first opponents would be Connor Esports, comprised of Connor Eats Pants, Emeru, Stans, EE, -E, and Amaranth. Now, at this point, we hadn't actually decided if we wanted me to play Greedon or not. However, in a brilliant call from Rickles, we decided to do it. Ooh, I'm nervous. Ooh. Best of one, man. No, Best of one. I believe in us. And if we don't, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we lose. The match started, and I saw something absolutely terrifying. If it's jungle zero, I might not be able to make it in time because he has the fluffy tail. But we'll get, I mean, nothing to do now, right? Let's just, we'll have to go All for right. it. There wasn't time to change, so I ran across the map and promptly stole their KO. I stole it. <laughs> Hey, wait, there's oh, a guy here. Connor's getting evaded. Connor's getting evaded. Who is this guy? Two more team members came to stop my attempted robbery, and I was knocked out. Three of them on me. There's three of them on me. I'm going to yeah. dive and just, just push Ooh, your you lanes. Dunk, yeah, dunk, yeah, dunk, yeah, dunk. Okay, big collapse. Big collapse. You guys got it. I trust you. Yeah. They do have skins, which is very cringe. What our opponents didn't realize, though, was that this was also part of the plan. By leaving their lanes, I was serving as a decoy, allowing my teammates to get more of the shared experience and score some goals. Where's, oh, wait, my Where's my backup? Where's my backup? Wait, these guys I'm know coming, what they're I'm coming, doing. I'm the fact that they came into our side that quick is just a show of confidence oh. that I was not ready for. After I revived, I headed straight back into the enemy jungle to take more of their wild Pokemon. I stole the jungle. <laughs> the squirrel is, is still in our jungle. This f***ing squirrel! Yeah! Okay, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Nice job, nice job. Dude, this squirrel sucks. He's so bad at the game. With the early experience we gained via my heist, we secured the first major objective without issue giving our whole team bonus experience. With the early experience drastically in our favor, we KO'd their entire team, secured Articuno, and won handily, starting off with one win and zero losses. Our opponents, however, were less happy. Whoever was playing the stupid squirrel, I don't know what's wrong with like, what, what, what is that? What does that thing even do? We'd won the first round, but our journey had only just begun. Our next match was against the Washington Pokemon team, comprised of Artie, Adriana, Hopcat, Josh, and Deezus. Because the first round had gone so well, we decided to go with Greedent's special heist for round two as well. I'm just seeing here, by the way, Greedent is a bastard. Try not yeah, to chase him. Oh, yeah. I took my saunter across the map into enemy territory and once again burgled the opposing jungler. I'm, I'm resting. I here. stole it. I stole it. Okay. Rat in the jungle. Help, up, help, 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 help. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming back. Sorry, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm still one oh, way. Oh, God, why Run is right. he so far forward? Just like in game one, I was KO'd after my little escapade but the decoy had once again been successful. Because Eldegoss had come up to help, the opponent's bottom lane was exposed, and my teammates took wild Pokemon and even scored early. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're stealing all the kills here. I'm coming, That's I'm coming, I'm coming. After I respawned, I ran to the top lane and helped my team nearly break the top goal within a few minutes of the match starting. Go, you guys score, you should score, I'll I try got, and keep I got off. Flash, I got flash. Nice job, I'm gonna go take jungle again. I headed back into the enemy jungle, but this time I was thwarted and failed to KO the Stantler before being knocked out. Despite being weaker than the previous game, my teammates had made great use of my decoy status and were stronger than normal, and we turned that early advantage into not only the first Dreadnought victory, but also KO'd most of their team and broke the bottom point. Nice job, super nice job. Okay, let's push this. Oh, nice! Kill nice. one. Nice, let's score, nice. let's score. Oh, I got owned! You guys go top, I'm going to the jungle. With the experience lead, we secured Rotom, broke their top point, and nearly broke their second point as well. I went back into the jungle, and things were looking grim. All five opponents stopped doing their objectives in order to try and stop me. Unfortunately for them, I was a bit too slippery, and escaped despite their best efforts. There's all five on me, but I'm making it- <laughs> <laughs> They're so bad! <laughs> they are so 
It's a, it's a robbery! We had a huge lead and felt good going into Articuno, which is exactly when disaster struck. Our team was totally out of position, and three of our members got KO'd quickly. We answered back by KOing most of their team, which is when I made a bad call. I told my team to go score, leaving Articuno totally undefended. The opposing team took the crucial bird and things were looking grim. They scored several hundred points and we waited with bated breath to see the result. Yeah, Come we had a big lead. Oh, yeah. 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 Miraculously, we'd been doing so well for the rest of the game that even though we lost Articuno, we still ended up winning. Our opponents had caught on to our strategy after the match, but thankfully it was best of one, so they wouldn't have another game to adapt. I think the problem there was the green, and it's just like the amount of times where it's like, it was just one of us in lane because yeah. two people were chasing green. And we were off to a strong start, but things were about to get difficult. Our round three opponents were SEAL Team 6 which is one of the favorites to win the whole tournament. Toxic Eternity, Scott Falco, Void, Jome, and Drumsy were the team members. And my teammates and I were especially worried about Void. He is incredibly talented at games across genres and would be playing Sarina, one of the most powerful characters in the game. We knew what we had to do. And once again, I rushed across the map to meet my fate. Stole it. For the first time, I was able to take both of the important wild Pokemon of the enemy jungler. I got both jungle, I got both jungle. I even made Nat alive this time, unlike my last two games. We were off to a much better start. I ran back into the enemy jungle before their jungler returned and made off with another buff. Enter Void. Void had had enough of my antics and had joined me in the jungle to make my life more difficult. Got it, huge, huge. Oh, I didn't get it. Yeah, Void got oh, it. Yeah. We fought for a while over the first Dreadnought, but Void came in at the last second and finished it off, putting us behind in experience for the first time all tournament. That early advantage snowballed, and the enemy team took a second Dreadnought, further compounding our deficit. We went into Zapdos losing, and the other team wasn't going to attack it for us. I realized at a crucial moment that their Greninja had left to go score, and because the enemy team was so tanky, that meant their only damaging Pokemon left was Void playing Sarina. Our whole team began furiously hammering at Zapdos, and Aaron as our Cinderace finished it off. It's, it's really low, go, go, go! Come on! Okay, okay now go score, run score, run score, run score! Even with Zapdos, it wasn't clear if we'd won. Somehow, with a margin of exactly 100, we'd managed to clinch victory. Yes. Nice! Who? <laughs> Let's go. What? Dude, you guys are nuts. <laughs> we were ecstatic, and we were also the only team that hadn't lost a game after the first three rounds. Feeling confident, we plunged into round four. Round four was against Team Tropius, comprised of Family Jewels, Tier Zoo, Major Duncan, Rubber Ross, and Ouija the God. We had way more experience with the game than them going in, and after our strong start, we were feeling confident. Yeah. Ross just got the game last night. <laughs> okay. Well, so did Scooch, so... And he yeah, already has a jack mark, Yeah, so. but Scooch is godlike. <laughs> you know the draw at this point. I run across the map, steal the enemy Pokemon, and cause mental damage to the opponent. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. I have been, uh, counter-jungled. It, it happened. Oh, that's a big problem. Oops. God damn it, man. How do you prevent this from happening, chat? Took some more farm, went down to score, and headed back into the enemy jungle before their jungler returned to take more of that delicious farm. This is the his character. What do you do? I was somehow already a higher level than their jungler, when typically, Greedent is one of the lowest levels on the team. We were so much stronger that we broke their bottom goal before Dreadnought had even appeared. We melted Dreadnought within 10 seconds, further solidifying our lead. We continued controlling the map for the rest of the game, and when Articuno came up, we won an extended team fight and wiped their whole team. We KO'd Articuno and went to score, solidifying our win with a margin of over 700 points. With this, we had crossed the halfway point of the tournament and were still undefeated. Round 5, however, filled me with dread. We were up against Imagine Dragons, which had not only the child of chaos himself, Alpharad, but also my Jigabrain friend Aaron Zhang. Aaron was even scheming before the match began. Jacob, I need you to watch this video. This is it. This is what, you what, what video do you have for me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we run in okay. circles. <laughs> uh... Rounding out the team were several other big threats in Atrioc, Ovali May, and Captain Kid. We knew this match was going to be tough, but there was nothing else to do except take a cheeky stroll across the jungle and, well. I stole it. it He's so mad. I, yeah. I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't satisfied with just one buff, so I took a corefish and then went down to grab Buffalant too. I stole another. I stole both right, jungle camps. Guys, he took both my buffs. I'm. This is a problem. <laughs> yeah. This is a. Uh... I don't know what to do. Three of them worked together to end my little escapade, but the damage was done. Not only because I denied them crucial experience, but also because while they'd been chasing me, my teammates had secured nearly all of a fresh bout of normally contested experience. I went back into their jungle, took Ludicolo, and evolved. I was still hungry, so I took Buffalon too. Jacob was, understandably, less happy. 
Wolfie, I don't know oh, what you to 30, do. Okay. Can't kill Greedy. I don't have any of my buffs. <laughs> we killed him. We've done it. Okay. Leave it to Wolf Glick to pull the cheesiest strat Ron imaginable. Lane. Despite our experience lead, our opponents worked together and made a coordinated push, breaking our bottom point before Dreadnought went up. We lost Dreadnought and were once again on the back foot. We managed to secure the next Dreadnought, evening things up a bit going into Articuno. We then performed my favorite Fortnite strategy and all hid in a bush. And just like when I play Fortnite, it didn't end well. The opposing team once again secured Zapdos, and things were looking grim. We KO'd three of their team members and sprinted to go score whatever point we could. After we scored, we dropped back to play defense, and sent Moxie sneakily across the map as a second wave of offense. We defended our point successfully, and Moxie scored 100 points in the final seconds of the match, earning us the victory. Oh nice job, God. everybody, yeah. Even though we won, I think I did mental damage to Alfred, which I felt bad about. Man. Chat's saying I threw. I don't think I threw. I think I just got outplayed by throw. Wolf. For me, the greeting strategy is always a bit inconsistent, and the fact that I stole nearly every buff was definitely a bit lucky. Nonetheless, I had chosen this criminal's path, and it was way too late to have regrets. We ran into round six, knowing that one more win would all but guarantee us the top spot. Our round six opponents were Team Australia, made up of Serenide, CJ, Caleb Hiles, Faye Mata, and Poppet. There was a lot on the line. I have to obliterate my girlfriend, I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, Team Australia had Faye, who was a good friend of mine and an especially talented gamer. I've played several games with Faye, including Smash, Battleship, and Unite, and she's better than me at all of them. That being said, I was determined to do my best, so I took my little jog into enemy territory once more. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I stole the farm. What the f way. is Wolfie doing over here? Yeah, yeah, we can, uh, we can, we can push. I stole another farm. I stole both farm. What the hell? With the extra experience, I evolved super early, KO'd their Steenie, scored a bunch of points, and went back into the enemy jungle. Oh, uh, you know, know, you're you know? just trying to take your stuff. I'm done. <laughs> I left. I'm pissed. I don't know what the hell to do to that. Our early experience lead once again allowed us to take Dreadnought. I got it. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Huge, huge. We continued on with the match, and although there were some minor speed bumps, I'm coming in. Right, I'm oh no, I'm, 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 my finger slipped. I ulted a core fish. We had a huge lead going into Zapdos. We used that lead to continuously KO their team without attacking the yellow chicken. Left with no other options, our opponents started attacking Zapdos only for us to KO them and steal the crucial objective, leading to a win via surrender and leaving us still undefeated. What team are they? Team five. I'm gonna say uh, BG. We had guaranteed ourselves the top spot, but we still had one final game left to play. Our final opponents were Team Reddit, made up of Failboat, Altrive, Modest Cube, Giwi, and Smith. Despite being our final opponents, this was the first time we'd be going up against another Greedon, so I wanted to do my best. And what better way to start our final match of the tournament than by once again committing my favorite burglary? Wait, I stole it. Not Yo, what the <laughs> hell? Is Yo, they're in my jungle? No. I got both their camps. I definitely need an adult. It's a story we've seen before. Three of them collapse on me to finish me off, but my teammates win their lanes harder because of it. After I respawn, I run right back into the enemy jungle, evolve, and steal Ludicolo once again. We had a lead going into Dreadnought, but the enemy team started it before we were in position. Thanks to a timely clutch from Rickles, our talent flame, we secured Dreadnought, nearly broke their bottom point, and even went on to get the first Rotom. With our enormous lead, we secured second Dreadnought, second Rotom, and broke their second top point. We secured a third Dreadnought right before Zapdos, but once again our opponents started attacking it before we were in position, and this time the coin flip didn't go in our favor. Oh, they're going for it. Shoot. Okay, everyone go center. We just go? I'm going. Yeah, don't go. attack them. Don't attack it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just wasted two I can't see what just left. Seconds, seconds, I'm stunning them. Oh Would my god. Dead? Oh, they got it, but we can kill them all. Happened. Kill them all, kill them all. Even though we'd lost Zapdos, we immediately KO'd all five of the opposing team and counterscored instead, sealing the game up and finalizing our record as seven wins and zero losses. And with that, we'd won the entire tournament. We'd managed to go undefeated, beating every other team throughout the course of the afternoon. We were ecstatic and ready to celebrate. Except, well... Alright, so it turns out that we hadn't actually won the tournament just yet. There was still a final match to be played between the top two teams. And, of course, fitting with the tournament theme, it was going to be a best-of-one match. After seven rounds, our team was locked for first place, but there was a tie for second between Alpharad's team and Void's team each with five wins and two losses. After a coin flip, a chat poll, and the head-to-head -head between the two teams, it was determined that we'd be playing against Alpharet's team in the finals. We were nervous, but our strategy hadn't failed us thus far, so we decided to do what we'd do best. Run across the jungle, steal the farm, and- You hate to see it. <laughs> no. You honestly do.
That's Sam, right. Wait, do we get a tiebreaker or whatever it's called? Yeah, we got washed. It turned out that between rounds, Team Imagine Dragons had been scheming to come up with a way to stop our Greedent strategy. Absol is one of the few Pokemon in the game that can KO Ludicolo before Greedent shows up, which is something I didn't know going in. It was the first time all tournament I'd failed to steal Ludicolo, and it totally snowballed into a resounding defeat. So, did we end up winning the tournament? No, but we did have the best win-loss record even after the finals, which we all felt good about. I think if the finals had been best of three, we might have been able to make some clever adaptations, but I don't think I can complain about best of one in good faith given how much it worked in our favor all tournament. If anything, I'm proud of Team Imagine Dragons for coming up with an answer to a strategy that looked pretty hard to deal with. And just like that, our run was over. We'd laughed, we'd cried, and we'd made a lot of people very unhappy with a burglar disguised as a squirrel. I'd like to give a special thank you to my teammates for being a joy to work with, Alpharad for hosting, and of course, you the viewer for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate you doing the usual YouTube blogna as it helps me out a lot and this video took over 6 months to make. Goodbye.